hearts with praise. Father, we thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us. I thank you, Lord, for the blessings of this week, the many things that you have done for us. Children, God, every healing and every deliverance, God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I thank you for the gospel. Thank you for the truth that you have given to us, Lord. God, everything that we have is because of you. Lord, every good, every perfect gift comes down from the Father of light. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. God, and we praise your name. You are our King of kings and our Lord of lords, and you are our joy, our strength of our life. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father, for all that you are, God. Hallelujah. If you would, reach out and take the hand of your neighbor. If you want to put your hand on their shoulder, whatever is appropriate. Amen. Let's pray for one another right now. God, you know the needs of my brother and my sister. You know what they're coming here tonight with, the struggles, the pressures. God, whatever issue is going on in their life, I ask that you administer to it now. Lord, let your spirit cover it. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you would anoint them, help them to receive what they need today. God, in all that they do, I pray, Lord, that you would be with them. Give them strength and let your anointing rest upon them, Lord. Use them, God, today. Lord, work through them. God, I ask that you would minister to their lives. God, let them receive a renewing of the Holy Ghost today. God, I ask that your spirit would encourage and lift them, Lord. Whatever thing is fighting against them, Lord, we bind it in the name of Jesus. Loose victory in this house tonight, Lord. We can't make it without you. We need you, Father. I thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing in this house right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that we can call upon you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I love you, Father. Thank you, God, for what you're doing. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Amen. Amen. I, 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 I would like for us to step out in the aisle, and if we could gather up around the front, amen. Something about us coming together is powerful. Amen. And, and I wonder if we could just join in together. If you're a guest here and you're unsure what's happening, it's all right. We're just going to come up around the front and we're going to pray together just for a few moments before we begin the service. If you want to join in with us, you are invited. Amen. Praise God. Something powerful about us just coming together. Amen. Amen. One more time. Let's, let's just lift up our hands to the Lord and let's take just a few moments and worship him. Come on, what has God done for you? What has God blessed you with? I thank you, Father, for all that you are and for your mercy in our life, God. We worship you. Lift up your name, God. I thank you. We can call upon you, Lord, and you never let us down. You never fail us. God, you have been so good. And we worship you today. We love you, Father. I thank you for all that you have done for us. Hallelujah. Take your hand and put it on your mind right now. There are people here tonight that need a renewing in their mind. Let's pray that God would do that right now. Father, I ask that you would touch my mind. Lord, let the, Lord, all the stresses and the worries, God, all of that that comes under your authority, your power. I ask that you would cover my mind in peace today. I cast down every stronghold, every thought that would exalt itself against the knowledge of you, Lord. Let your spirit renew my mind tonight, God. We need a renewing in our minds, Lord. Speak against every fear never worry, every anxiety in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you would bless this place today, God. Lift your hands right now. Lord Jesus, use my hands tonight as instruments of praise. Lord, your word tells me to lift my hands. Hallelujah. And Lord, to pray with my hands uplifted. I'm going to lift up my hands as a sign of surrender to you tonight. And God, you are my King of kings and Lord of lords. And I dedicate my hands as instruments of worship. Lord, I dedicate my feet, God, as instruments of praise. I'm going to dance in your presence. I'm going to respond to your word. Lord Jesus, I'm going to respond to praise tonight. Lord, Lord, anoint my lips as I lift up my voice to you. God, I dedicate my lips as an instrument of praise. God, I'm going to lift up a loud voice to you. Come on, let's give him a loud voice of praise. Lord, we worship you. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, tonight is our night. I thank you, Father, for what you're doing in this place tonight, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, you're so good, Lord. We worship you. Yeah, hallelujah. Ready for a breakthrough tonight? Come on, let's give him a loud voice of praise. Come on, let's give him a loud voice of praise. Come on, let's give him a loud voice of
undefeated one My light and my salvation When the wicked, my enemies and my foes Came upon me, the heat of my head They stumbled and fell
a holy and sovereign God. I feel like God wants to do something in this place. Would you worship the Lord with me for the next few moments without music, without focusing on what your neighbor is doing or what you have planned tomorrow, what's going to go on this week, but right now, would you focus on the Lord with me, Lord Jesus? You are holy, holy, holy God. We come together as your people to worship you, hallelujah, God. You're a prayer answering God. You're a mighty sovereign God. Hallelujah. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever, Lord. Hallelujah. I know you hear the prayers of your people. I know you know the needs that are in this place. I thank you for the testimonies, God, and the lives that have been touched, and the lives that have been changed forever, God. We come to worship you. Hallelujah. We put aside all distractions, all hindrances, anything that may keep us, Lord, from walking into your presence. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Clap your hands to the Lord as you make your way back to your seat this evening. Hallelujah. What a privilege and an honor to be in God's house, to feel his presence, to be able to come here freely, no persecution, not worried if somebody's going to tattle on us or say that we're we're Christians or so. We, are, we live in the blessed nation. We have tremendous privilege and it's a great time to be in God's house tonight we want to give you an opportunity to give also to the Lord another way that we are faithful in our praise and that's in our tithing and in our giving if you need an envelope please raise your hand the ushers are going to be uh, making their way through the congregation keep in keep in mind there's several ways to give here at the Pentecostals you can give by way of envelope we have given kiosk in the back if you'd like to give electronically and on the church website, there is a giving tab where you can give electronically there as well. As you prepare your tithes and offering, would you um, uh, focus on the announcements uh, behind me? Welcome. It's our pleasure to have each of you here with us today. We'd like to share some upcoming events happening here at the POK. On Wednesday, February 19th, we will be having our small group meetings. We invite every member to participate as we gather in homes across the Houston area for food, fun, and fellowship. If you are not yet assigned to a group, 
please connect with us in the foyer. On Sunday, February 16th at 6 p.m., the Pentecostals of Katy will be hosting a night of praise. Make sure to attend for a great time of worship. If you are a guest, we invite you to connect with us in the foyer at our Next Steps booth. Once again, thank you for joining us on this Sunday here at the Pentecostals. Amen. I also have a couple announcements that I want to uh, provide you verbally. We are finishing up our database update. This is all the information of all our members. If you have not updated your uh, information in our database, there's going to be uh, Sister Wharton in the back. She's going to be updating your information, so please get with her. Uh, we're just making sure that we have good contact information for you, cell phone numbers, emails, addresses. Sometimes we change those often, um, and we want to make sure we have a good database. Many times, if we ever have to cancel service because of weather or big events that are going on, or if we want to get some information out to the body quickly, we go to this database. And if we have bad information, sometimes you'll miss good uh, and important announcements. So we want to give you that opportunity, please, today after service. If you have not done that, we'll please take a minute to update your information. And we also want to remind everybody that tax statements are available. I had pr uh, plenty of people ask me about them. After service, they're also going to be handing those out uh, for all your giving of 2019. Because God blesses us in so many ways, and he also blesses us financially. So you can pick those up after service. Would you stand to your feet with me? And ushers, would you come to the front? And if you have your tithes or offering ready to the Lord, would you raise it up? And let's pray that God would multiply it for his kingdom. Lord God, thank you for everything that you bless us with. Thank you for the peace of mind, joy, and love in our homes, God. Health in our bodies, Lord. And thank you for blessing us financially that we can be giving to those in need, Lord, that you can multiply this for your kingdom, Lord, and you can save a soul. In Jesus' name we pray. Bring your tithes and offering to the Lord.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Why don't we clap our hands to the Lord right now? Why don't we give him praise right now? He is worthy. He is worthy of all praise right now. Why don't you give him praise right now? We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy. You are worthy of all praise, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing in this place here tonight, Jesus. Oh, I feel the power of God in this place here tonight. You may be seated, church, at this time. We want to welcome everybody at the Pentecostals of Katy tonight. If this is your first time or second time visiting here at the Pentecostals of Katy and you did not get a first or second time guest card, would you raise your hands? The usher will hand that to you. There's some gift associated with that. We would like for, uh, for you to redeem those gifts. Ushers, if you don't mind, there's a first time guest over here. Thank you, Brother Wilson. I appreciate it. Anybody else? First time or second time guest over here in the middle as well? If you guys can get a first time or second time guest card, welcome to the Pentecostals of Katy. There's some gift associated with that. We'll love for you to, to redeem. If, why don't we welcome our online audience at this time and those that are listening in Revival Radio right now? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's quite a few members of the church that are sick, but I know they're probably watching online. When I call your name at this time, and I apologize in advance if I've mispronounced your name, but when I call your name, would you please just raise your hands? We want to know where you sit it. Patricia Cruz. Patricia Cruz. Welcome to the Pentecostals of Katy. Elizabeth Cruz. Next to Patricia Cruz. Welcome to the Pentecostals of Katy. We're glad you're here tonight. Robin Fowler. Welcome to the Pentecostals of Katy. We're glad you're here tonight. Also, we have Ashley Timlett. Ashley Timlett. Are you here tonight? Amen. Welcome to the Pentecostals of Katy here tonight. Angelica Rodriguez. Angelica Rodriguez, where you at? Welcome to the Pentecostals of Katy tonight. We're glad you're here. We also want to welcome our evangelist, Charles Rorod again. Glad to have you back over here tonight. What a tremendous service we've been having the last couple of weeks. Church, if we can stand, we're going to put five minutes on the clock. You know where our guests are seated. Let's go greet him in Jesus' name.
We serve a great God. Our God is so good. Amen. Now the song, the lyrics of the song says, I can't stop praising his name. The truth is, many of us prove that song wrong because we can stop praising his name. It's entirely possible, amen, for us to stop praising his name physically. No matter how inspired you are, you can stop praising his name. Amen. That's not the message of the song. Can I just, I'm so overwhelmed by it that I just can't stop. The message of the song is understanding the power of praise and understanding the blessing of God in our life. God has been so good to me. God has, has blessed me that I cannot stop whatever I do I can give up a lot, but I can't stop praising his name. The moment I stop praising his name, I'll forget everything he's brought me out of, every dark night, every low valley. Come on. Is there anybody here that your testimony of God's blessing in your life is so overwhelming that you can tell yourself, self, don't ever stop praising the name of the Lord. God is so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We serve a great God. He is a great God. Amen. Amen. I want to take just a moment and, uh, and say it is, it is good to see everyone here tonight. We're gonna, I'm going to get out of the way of the choir here in just a moment. And um, amen. Um, thank God for what he's doing. We serve a wonderful God. You know what? I, I just... I, I was going to do this. We're, we're going to wait on this just a little bit because I just feel like God wants to move in this service. I wonder if there's anybody here right now that would just stand to your feet, lift up your hands, and let's just take a moment and just worship his name. Hallelujah. Jesus, we love you, God. Thank you for your goodness and your blessings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your blessings, Lord. We love you, God. I thank you for what you're doing. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together and let's welcome the POK choir as they come. See you. 
Thank you.
in this place tonight. He knows us. He knows our hearts. He knows our intents. He knows our desires. He sees us at our lowest point. He sees us at our weakness. And still he chooses to call us by name. Hallelujah, Jesus. I thank you, God. And that same God who knows us, he doesn't just walk with us. He doesn't just talk with us. But he's fighting on our behalf. Come on. How many know that we're in a war? We're in a war for our souls. We're in a war for our families. And I don't know about you, but I've come into this house tonight ready to declare, devil, you can't have my family. You can't have my breakthrough. Come on. I wonder if somebody would lose your praise in this house. Come on and use your praise as your weapon tonight. God's going to war on our behalf. Put your hands together. I got joy in my soul, cause God is in control. I got Satan on my trail, but I'm singing all is well. He's attacking every day, but I'm watching while I pray. And no matter the attack, I won't turn back, no. This means war. Come on, put your hands together. This means war. This means war. I declare war on the enemy. the same whatever's going wrong my war clothes are on and i might be in a daze but you can't have my praise no matter the attack i can't turn back now this means war this means war this means war say this means this means war declare war on the enemy this means this means war this means war this means war say this means We're in the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. There's healing in the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. 
in my soul Cause God is in control I got Satan on my trail But I'm singing all is well He's attacking every day But I'm watching while I pray And no matter the attack I can't turn back This means war This means war This means war This means war Put the devil under your feet This means war Working power in the blood. There's power to say. I plead, I plead the blood. There's power to set you free tonight. I plead, I plead the blood. Now tell the enemy, you can't have my family. You can't have my family. And you can't have my yin trees.
I wonder, is there anybody that's been going through a struggle and a trial? It's in our moments of struggle that sometimes doing the right thing becomes difficult. Warfare was never intended to be easy, but God did destine us to be more than conquerors. If we will give it all we've got, God will make up the difference. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, the Bible says, but against principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness in high places. I don't know how it works. I can't explain why it works, but I do know that praise works. When I'm going through a battle, when I'm going through a trial, I don't know why this works. I don't know why lifting up my voice and giving glory to God gets me victory. But I do know that whenever I lose myself in praise, all the battles that I'm facing and all the trials that I'm going through, suddenly they're under my feet. I wonder, is there anybody here tonight that just wants to fight a little battle with praise? Just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. I'm sorry. Amen. Here's what we do sometimes. When we hear good music going, we, we tend to slide back into this position as though we are the audience. But I want you to know if you understood what's happening around you right now, that right now there are demons and angels fighting for you. And the Lord is interceding for you right now you'd realize this is not about you observing and watching somebody perform, but all of heaven is focused on what you're doing. So I want you to try something. Now here, again, here's what we do. The choir starts singing. And we just start clapping our hands. And it becomes more about giving a beat than it is about giving God praise. Now, if you've gotten a breakthrough doing this, then go ahead and do that. But if you need a breakthrough, to, a spiritual breakthrough, come on, it's time to really get engaged in this battle. If you were fighting for your life, you wouldn't just be... Come on, you'd be giving it everything you've got. Remember, it's all about Him. As they begin to sing this again, I wonder if you will lose yourself in praise to God. Come on, give God the kind of praise that gets away. Hallelujah, come on, give him praise. Come on, let's go to war tonight.
somebody victory here tonight Jesus told his disciples behold I give you power to tread upon serpents and over all the power of the enemy how many feels like the enemy's coming against your house right now amen somebody say I have power to put it under my feet Amen. I know this sounds simple and some of you may not do it because you don't think it'll work. But I want you to pick up your right foot right now. Come on, just pick it up and hold it up. If you need to hang on to the chair to do it, just pick up your right foot right now. All week long, some of you have been oppressed. You've been depressed. You, you, you have had all kinds of hell covering your life and coming against you. Contrary winds of this world have been pushing against you. Amen. Wouldn't you like to put that under your feet? Get it off your back and put it under your feet. Get it off of your mind and put it under your feet. Hallelujah. I want you to, to right now imagine that problem under your foot. And in the name of Jesus, come on. I want you to shout in Jesus' name. Right now, I put it under my foot. Devil, you have lost the battle. You have lost in the name of Jesus, I claim the victory over it. You will not win. Depression has got to leave. Fear has got to be broken in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost here tonight. Amen. Amen. Thank God for what we feel. Thank you, choir. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Turn around to three or four people and tell them the Spirit of the Lord is in this place tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. I feel the Holy Ghost here in this house. Hallelujah, amen. There's a sweet touch of the Lord here tonight. I'm so tired of the enemy playing with the minds of God's people, tormenting the hearts and the spirits of the people of God. I'm done. I'm tired of it. We have authority over that. We don't have to put up with a lot of the things that we've been putting up with. I kind of... I, I, I kind of want to yank the curtains down from that spirit of Pharaoh. You remember what he said? He said, if these Israelites ever just realize who they are, we will not be able to hold them captive any longer. The church needs to realize we have more authority than we're exercising. We got more power than we're flexing. God has given us the, the, the ability, the authority, and the commission to make a difference in this world. Hallelujah. Amen. I wish I had the voice to preach. Amen. I'd tell Brother O'Rourke to take a night off. Amen. But I don't have the voice to preach. And so I'm going to, amen. We're going to turn this over to him. If we could all stand together. To all of our guests that are here this evening, thank you for being here with us. And uh, if I haven't met you yet, my name is Rob McKee. I'm the senior pastor here at the Pentecostals. I sound different than this normally. But uh, I, uh, we're so glad to have each of you here with us. I encourage you, if you're looking for a church home, I encourage you to do what we call Stick Six. And because every service at an apostolic Pentecostal church is different, and it takes about six services to get a good picture of what we're all about. And so I encourage you to come back and be with us. We have Sunday morning, 10 a.m., Sunday night, 6 p.m., Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. And I encourage you just to come to... Um,
uh, to at least six services. And in six services, you'll be able to make an educated decision on whether or not we are the church for you. Now, if you already decided and you feel at home, God bless you. Welcome. We're glad to have you here at the Pentecostals today. Turn around to somebody that you did not ride to church with. Okay? You didn't ride to church with them. And shake their hand and, say, and tell them, I am so glad you're here. Come on, find somebody. Don't, if nobody talked to you, turn around to somebody else. You tell them, I'm so glad you're here. Amen. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for what we feel here today. If we could continue standing for just a moment. It's been such an honor to have Brother Charles O'Rourke here with us. And thank God for his ministry. He's been a blessing. And um, for all those that have gone out, how many went, were able to go out on the ministry teams this, this past week? Lift your hand. All right, we got a few here. In the, oh, is that it? Come on. Oh, they're shy. Okay. Come on, raise your hand really high if you're able to go out on the ministry teams. All right, okay, all right, all right, amen. Well, I want to encourage you to keep it going. And if you didn't get a chance to go out on the outreach teams, uh, I want you to know that's not the last time that we're doing that. We, we want to continue to do this. His purpose in coming here was to teach you how to do it so that we could do it regularly. And so I want to encourage you to continue that. We have several folks that need rides to church. And so if you um, are interested in joining the transportation team, uh, you, you want to make an impact, but you don't feel like you're capable of teaching Bible studies, you want to be in part of the, the transportation team, all you got to do is just drive. And uh, some of us do that. Well, I started to say we do it in our sleep. Hopefully we're not doing it in our sleep. But uh, we do it uh, all the time. And uh, it can make a big difference in somebody's life. And so I want to encourage you to uh, join one of these outreach teams and uh, let the Lord work through you. Wouldn't it be great when you get to heaven to turn around and see people that the only reason they're there is because you were there. I'm telling you, you were there to drive a van. You were there to knock on their door. You were there to teach a Bible study. You were there. And because you were there, they're going to meet you over there. Won't that be awesome? Amen. I, I don't know how God is going to do it. I, I just, I believe that we will be rewarded according to our works here on earth. So there's somehow, there will be a tally. There's some way that there's going to be a tally, and God is going to let us see the impact of what we did here on earth. Amen. So thank God for your service. And uh, Brother O'Rourke, it's such an honor to have you and your son here with us this week, and we want you to come take your liberty in the pulpit. Put your hands together, and let's welcome Brother Charles O'Rourke as he comes. Katie. This time I truly got to know this church. When I was here back last time, I was in and out so quick, I really did not get to know the church like I did this time. And I want to say that I love each and every one of you. And uh, Genesis 17, 14, 17. As I sit there and I watch... I'm going to turn around and look at everybody. I know a lot of y'all are gone, but I'm just going to take a little look. At uh, My son's 12 years old. He has no idea what he's experiencing as far as... I think he understands to an extent. But I'm getting to walk into worlds that I didn't get to walk in before, if that makes any sense, Mr. McKee. It's been a long journey. Uh, it hasn't always been this way. I used to preach at a lot of churches that I didn't know if God himself showed up to. But this is the only people that would invite me. I'm just being real with you. And then all of a sudden, God started shining down on me. And uh, some guys may take this pulpit and not appreciate it I'm not one of them don't ever take churches for granted I've got friends who have preached this gospel in front of large crowds 
who are no longer with us because of decisions that my friends, I'm not saying one friends, have made. People that influenced me and had an effect on my ministry. So I grasp hold of these men such as Brother McKee and, and Brother Dr. Eugene Wilson and say thank you for being in my life. Thank you for being in my life. I'm honored and privileged to be here. Don't worry, I'll preach. But as you sang, Sister McKee, I got a little emotional. I'm sorry. I pinched myself and think, am I really getting an opportunity? My son said, where are we going next? I said, oh, we were good enough to make it two Sundays here, but they're shipping us to Dallas. <laughs> He said, what's it going to be like? I said, we're going to have revival. There ain't going to be quite as many people there, but we're going to have revival. And we're going to help grow a church in Louisville. And then from there, we go to Shreveport, which will be similar to this. But reality is I'm a blessed man. I'm living a blessed life, Brother McKee. Don't worry, I'm going to preach. I'm just being a little sentimental. Just shoot me later. We had 14 adult guests this morning. We had people get baptized. We have people get the Holy Ghost. This is why I do what I do. I, I, I must say this, and I'm going to preach. Don't worry, I'm docking my time. One of the ladies, a mother, showed up, and she sat over there. She was an older lady, and her, I don't know how old, I don't want to say too old. She texted me today and said, Evangelist, you're getting ready to break into my family. My daughter's need what you have they need a church and I believe you're going to reach them and she came to check this church out and I've been communicating with her and she said it's the will of God for them to be in this church and you're going to win them I get a text from the lady who got the Holy Ghost this morning she texts me she said, I still got my yellow chip. I had to go to work. She said, but thank you for bringing me to this church. I love it. I have never felt anything like it before. And a young man with the, he's not young, well, whatever, to some of you might be young. He had the cane. He'd been in a coma for 96 days, sat over there on the left-hand side. When he went home, he looked at me and said, this is a church like no other. I'm going to get baptized there and I'm going to live for God there. I promise you. I don't do this for accolades, Katie. I don't do this so I can make a name. I do this because when I stand before God and on judgment day, he looks at me and he says, I don't care that you preach at the Pentecostals of Katie or the Pentecostals or whatever, but that you won souls for me, that somebody might know me that didn't get to know me before. Verse 15, I'm going to read, thank you. I don't have to say thank you to these singers because they already know they're great. I mean, do I need to turn around and tell Sister McKee that she's a great singer? Really? I think she knows, but she's a very humble woman. But I'm just saying, do I need to tell her something that we, we all agree on that? Gifted woman. I mean, I'm almost over there in tears. Not only does she sing, and I'm going to preach, I promise, stuck in my time, but I felt goosebumps go up and down. And I feel, I'm from a good church, St. Louis. I'm from the sanctuary. We have good music. I've been spoiled. I preach at churches that have good singing and choir. That's all great, but there's anointing. Sister McKee's got an anointing like no other. Thank you, and I'll shut up. And God said unto Abraham, as for Sarai, that's what it is. Sarai, lady, whatever you want to call her. Thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but her name shall be called Sarah. She's a princess now. She's not just a lady. And I will bless her and give her the, a son also of her. Yeah, I will bless her as she shall be mother of nations and kings of people. Be of her. I prayed about this tonight. 
As I sat in my hotel, sometimes you get excited over a great service like this morning, and that's all great. But the Lord told me tonight that there were going to be people like Pastor talked about that are hurting, that are going through tough times, that are looking for answers and direction. And thank you, Brother Owen, and a couple other guests that are here tonight from this morning. There's at least three of them in the crowd. But I want to speak for just a few moments. You cannot have faith without hope. Faith, throw it out the window if there's no hope. Bear with me. I'll preach about it. Who needs God to answer a prayer in your life right now? Hold up a hand. Katie, if you need God to answer a prayer, let's lift up our hands across this building. Lord, I don't deserve what I've been given, Lord. I'm thankful to walk into this house. I'm thankful, Lord, that I could take my son to places that I would have never dreamed of. I'm thankful that I have a son that a daughter and a family that I can share this gospel with. I'm thankful that they get to experience the power of the Holy Ghost. But let your anointing fall upon this church. Let somebody's life be changed. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise across this. You may be seated. Someone asked me, I'm going to preach, if you had to describe McKee and Pastor McKee in two words, how would you describe Brother Pastor McKee? I'd say, underdog. He's far the underdog. you got to respect that in a man of God. We have so many passive Christians in today's society that has a faith that limits their dreams. I don't know about you, but Pastor talked about this. I want a radical faith, not a content faith. You can't just sit in a couch, so to speak, and wait on the Lord, because I promise you, life will pass you by. You're not waiting on the Lord this evening. The Lord is waiting on you. The kingdom suffereth violence, and the violence take it by force. Everybody Jesus called in the word of God was busy. You don't see Jesus calling lazy people in the word of God. When he found the disciples, they were after it. He taught them. He trained them. God uses people that are willing to move. I believe there are people inside of this building tonight that you got kings and nations inside of you. You feel like you are spiritually barren this evening. You may feel like you are broke. And you've drug yourself into the house of the Lord and worship with this phenomenal choir. But on the inside, you feel like you are broke. But I'm here to tell you, you have kings and nations inside of you. You may feel like you're lonely, but God's got kings and nations inside of you. Don't judge what's around you to determine what you have. Abraham laughed at God. Abraham said, there's no way I can have a child. I'm 100 years old. And that sweetheart of a lady that I'm married to, Sarah, she's nothing but 99. It's too old. It's too late. We've been through too much. My past experiences inform me. That what you say is in front of me, he said, is impossible. Because I have no point of reference to see anything like this happen at my age. My neighbors, he basically said, they're not having children. My friends, the ones that are alive, most of them are dead or in a nursing home. They're definitely not having children. The people I went to school with, the ones that are left you got to be joking, God. There's no way that we can have a child at this point. But Abraham says under God that there's a son, my son Ishmael, might live before thee. I have something to give you, God. I've got Ishmael. But Abraham said, I have this kid over here. That situation, you know, that happened, that mistake that I made. But you know what? He's going to be good enough. But God said, Sarah, thy wife will bear a son, and they shall call his name Isaac. 
I'm not talking about Ishmael. I'm not interested. I'm not taking away from Ishmael, he's saying, but I'm talking about having a son named Isaac. I'm not talking about a substitute blessing. But I'm talking about Isaac. I'm not talking about a counterfeit situation. But I'm talking about Isaac. I do not need you to cover for me, Abraham. I'm talking about giving birth to Isaac. I will establish a covenant with him. For everlasting covenant with seed after him. Yes, Ishmael will multiply exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he begot. I will make him a great nation. But that's not where my covenant is going to come from. My true covenant is going to come from Isaac. But God, this seems mathematically possible. At the set time that you're telling me this is going to happen, I have one year to make this happen. That means I got three months to, to, to get pregnant, and I have nine months to deliver. That's almost mathematically impossible. Hebrews 11. Substance of things hoped for. Evidence of things unseen. Sometimes you have to put hope before you have faith. You would think you would read this text in Hebrews 11.1 1, and you would think the star of the text would be faith. But faith is not the star of the text because to me, hope is the star of the text because you cannot have faith if you do not have hope. And that's what a lot of people struggle with when it comes to the house of God. Abraham had no hope that this could possibly happen. And if you have no hope, you can have no faith. And if I mean honest with you, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. If you don't have faith, hope, excuse me, then faith has absolutely no job. It's increasingly difficult to get people to come to the house of the Lord and worship God in 2020 because not that they don't have faith, but they have lost their hope. They have lost their desire. They feel like there's no purpose. I have no hope of coming out of my situation. I have no hope of overcoming my struggle. And I'm here to tell somebody without hope, you cannot have faith. You've got to have hope that you can come in here and get a miracle. You've got to have hope that you can come in here and get a healing. You've got to have hope that you can come in here and get deliverance. You can't have faith if you don't have hope. you got to walk inside of here and say, I know everything's going to be all right because I have a hope in a God that is greater and stronger than the situation that I am in. The reason people have lost hope, I can tell you, is by the way they eat spiritually. See, faith cometh by hearing, right? And hearing by the word of God. If your faith has nothing to do, you're not hungry. What drives you to come to church? So you can feed your faith. It's about the faith being hungry. But you cannot have faith if you do not have hope. When I walked into the house of the Lord, there were people that said, there's no way you're going to make it in living for God. There's no way you're going to get deliverance. But I had hope in a God that gave me breath. I had hope in a God that gave... Do you hear what I'm trying to tell somebody? Even when your faith is weak, when you got hope, you can walk in the house of the Lord and say, I am weak, but I have hope that everything's going to be all right. I have hope that God is my healer. I have hope that God is the Alpha and the Omega. I've got hope that when I get up in the morning, I can lift up my hands and say the joy of the Lord is my strength. The people that are listening to me this morning or this evening, Pastor asked, how many of you are going through a battle in your life? Hold up one hand across this building right now. You are going through some sort of battle. Keep it high so I can see it. I don't count very well. Keep it high unless you can have rotator cuff surgery. That is a large group of people. There are people in this building right now who are listening to me who are in a fight and a battle for your life. You did not come to see what somebody's tie was going to look like. You didn't come to see what color socks somebody was going to come to. But you came out here to feed your faith. You came out here in a fight like no other fight. You came to let the devil know, I still have hope in a God. That's the beginning and the...
I still hope in a God that has the beginning and the end. I still have hope in a God that brought me out of the miry clay. I still have a hope in a God that breathed into my nostrils that I might live. I still have hope. And as long as you got hope, faith will take care of itself. Faith will take care of itself. Somebody let the enemy know. Look out, devil. You may have robbed my faith, but you can't take my hope. You may have attacked my mind, but you can't attack my hope. You may bring me down, but you can't stop my hope. I have come too far to turn back now. There's something inside of me that is greater and stronger than any adversary. There's something in me. It's my famous Yankee lines. Is this okay? I say that all the time. I'm waiting for some crazy lady in the church. No, shut up. You're getting on my nerves. It's going to happen to me. Hope is an expected end. Listen to me closely. I'm going to help somebody right now. Hope is an expected end, but it's not necessarily an expected process. Did you hear me? It's an expected end, but it's not necessarily an expected process. Hope is an expected end. That means you know what's going to happen at the end. Hope has nothing to do with the process, but it has everything to do with the destination. And I'm here to tell somebody, when you have hope, you ain't worried about what you go through in life. You can be sick in your body. You can be fighting hell in your home. You can be attacked in your mind. You can get a bad report and you can walk inside of here and say, I know what's getting ready to happen at the end. You can bring me down, devil, but I know what's going to happen at the end. You can attack my family, but I know what's going to. Oh, I'm preaching to somebody. I got a word of God for Katie. I know what's going to happen at the end. Every demonic attack, every struggle, every battle. I got this. I got this. God's in. You know, I thought I might get off the night off before I got shipped to Dallas, but I didn't really want the night off because I love this church. I love you guys. I want a night off at some other church, but not here. I love this church. My hope, listen, let's make this real simple. A little Bible study. My hope is I need a business. My faith is I need a building. Did you hear me? My hope is I need a business. My faith is I need a building. But if the building doesn't come through, which is your faith, don't think I lost hope. Do you hear me? Because I may have to, oh, I'm in the Holy Ghost, right? I'm going to help somebody right now. I may have to change my method, modify it a little bit. I'm going to have the same hope. I just may not be in that building, but I still got the hope in the business. I just may have. I thought it was going to go that way, but God's going to change it to this way. But instead of having a pity party and feeling sorry for myself, I walk in the house of the Lord. You can take my building, but you can't take my business. You can take my sickness, but you can't take my praise. You can attack me, but you can't take my... Oh, devil, you better look out. I got something boiling inside of me that is so powerful. It's in the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. I got hope like I've never had hope. I got hope like I've never. I was over here, but I'm going over here, and I'm still praising him. I was over here, but I'm going over there, and I'm still praising him because he's the same God. He's the same God. He's the Alpha. He's the Omega. He's omniscient. He's holy. He's omnipotent. He is the same God. I don't know about you, but I don't come live this life. I didn't come here to preach to come home empty-handed. I may have to toil all night, but I'm going to get my business. We all have teachings about faith. 
I've been prayed for. Let me tell you something in the Holy Ghost. I've had the holiest of holies in our movement, Sister McKee, lay their hands on me. When I, I've been so sick, I just talk, called my wife on the phone. You know why I'm so happy I'm here? I'll tell you why. I've had the best week in my health in two years right now. I don't know what it is. I don't know, Pastor. The best week in... My faith gets weak sometimes, Sister McKee, but my hope is that God created this body and he's taken me too far to let me die. It may not always go the way I want it to go, but it's still going to go, devil. It's still going to go. It's still going to move. Now I, got, I know I got some intellect sitting over here on this platform. Some, you hear me, doctors, and whatever titles we got in this building. In a court case, many times, before you go into litigation, they will give you an opportunity to settle. A lot of people settle not because of their innocence or guilt. They settle because it costs too much to litigate the case. Sometimes in a case where you have large expenses, you will settle the case because you don't want to pay the cost. But when you're highly principled, it doesn't matter the cost. It doesn't matter. You want to get to the facts. And whatever it costs you, it may be inconvenient. You may have to get a jury, a selection that you don't want. It may be tough. But you say, I refuse to settle. All around me in churches, people are losing their hope and they're settling and they're selling out early because their faith is weak because they have no hope that they're going to win the trial. But I believe that there's somebody that's walked inside of here that you've been battered, bruised, thrown from one side of life to another and you are getting ready to settle and sit down on a chair and say, I've come as far as I'm going to come. But I believe something's stirring inside of you and you've let your flesh know I may fight, I may get tired. I may be criticized, I may get sick in my body, I may go financially broke, but I got hope at the end of the day that God's going to bring me through this. So you can look at me like I'm crazy, but I will praise and worship and keep on fighting and keep on lifting up my hands and keep on saying the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. Knock me down, the name of Jesus. Knock me down, the name of Jesus. Attack my home, the name of Jesus. Make me tired, the name of Jesus. Can I have about seven or eight minutes? All right, how about nine? Can I have nine? <laughs> Oh, I love these guys. Let me tell you something. I'm not picking out a spiritual casket. I'm not quitting. There have been times I've laid in bed and I've been so sick I could barely move. There have been times my doctor said, I don't know what's going to happen to you, Charlie. You may be in a wheelchair because of this neurological situation. But let me tell you something. I am not checking in and giving up my hope and saying I need a spiritual casket and I'm going to go sit somewhere. If you want to go ahead and spiritually die, go ahead. But I am not going to plan my spiritual death and settle for what the devil thinks that I deserve. I am not going to be a statistic. It may take me longer. It may take me more money. I may have to go through a battle, but I don't want no spiritual casket because the same God that filled me with the Holy Ghost, uh, baptized me in the name of Jesus, is the same God that's going to bring When you get tired, keep praising him. When you're under attack, keep fighting. When I'm not going to lay over here and die, but I'm going to make up my mind. I got hope in the same God that brought me out. I got hope in the same God that filled me with the Holy Ghost. I got hope.
I don't know about you, but I'm going to fight every day. I have opposition. I don't know about you. I have voices. Yeah, you can call me crazy. I have voices, one on my shoulder telling me, there's no hope in your situation, so why have faith that God's going to bring you out? Let me tell you something, flesh. I am not old. I am not short. I am not too tall. I am not too stupid. I am not what you say I am. But God has told me I cannot settle, and it's time that I feed my soul like I've never fed my soul before. I am not... Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I'm here to tell somebody. I do not want a preacher to get up here and preach like a wimpy person, like a little cat. And say, oh, I want you to come to the altar. And there's a God that loves you. And he's worried about saying anything that offends you. Honey, when I got in the church, I needed a preacher to tell me, Charlie, you're, I was living in a car. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I was living in a car. Half the people didn't know when I left St. Louis. It's cold in November. I was living in a car, and nobody knew I was living in a car. I had no faith in nothing, but God spoke to me while I was sleeping in my car and said, Charlie, I filled you with the Holy Ghost. I baptize you in, in my name. I want you to have hope that I'm the God that's going to bring you out of this mess even when... I want some preacher to preach it to me. I want some preacher to tell me it's okay to get up in the morning. It's okay to go to the enemy's camp. It's okay to take back what he stole from you. Give me my praise. Give me my worship. Give me my hope. Give me my fight. Give me my... Get me to do something in the name, in the name, in the name of Jesus. Get up, fight, 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 fight. fight. Oh, somebody, let the enemy know you can't take what I got. I got hope. I'm going to get a little emotional, Pastor. I'm sorry. I, I've, been, I've been a little emotional all day, Pastor. You can slap me. But I was laying. Don't do it, please. You're a big fella. Listen, I was laying in, my, in, in a car in St. Louis. There were people in the church that did not want me there because they thought that I was not fitting in because they knew I didn't have the right shoes, the right clothes, or the right anything. And word spread that I lived in a car. And they thought, how in the world can a boy come to church and live in a car and God spoke to me when my faith was weak and said Charlie I've given you hope that when this is all said and done I'm going to use you like I've never used you before <laughs> mama get up and fight daddy get up and fight young person get up and fight get up get up let the enemy know I may look dead but I'm alive I may look beat but I'm alive I may look like I'm under attack but I'm alive I got hope somebody clap your hands unto the Lord Oh, somebody let the enemy know something is boiling inside of me. Something's coming alive. Something's coming alive. Three or four minutes, I think. I got to go to Dallas. Nice seeing you all. I've enjoyed the trip down here. I've enjoyed spending time with you all. Love you all. See you next time. But I want to share something with you. I was... Pastor asked me like to fish. I said I don't really have a lot of time to fish because I have to door knock and do all these fun. Thank you there, Reverend Gage. I have to do all these things that God's called me to do. But I used to go deer hunting, and when I went deer hunting, he, I said I want to get me a ten point buck. And I went out a few times and I sat out there, 
and I hunt it, and I hunt it. And I would see a bunch of squirrels, and I'm high octane if you haven't figured it out. I'm hyper, and I don't focus very well, and I can't sit still. And all of these squirrels were running around me. And I thought to myself, I may not be able to kill a 10-foot butt, but I'm going to shoot one of these squirrels. But something said, hey, I'm going to kill one of these squirrels. But then something else told me, Charlie, you're going to settle? Because who mounts squirrels on a wall? Nobody says, hey, come look at my big furry squirrel. They always say, come look at my... And yep, see? Who mounts a squirrel and says, oh, this is beautiful. Oh, look at your 10-point buck. Well, look at my pretty little gray squirrel. Don't be satisfied with something that should only encourage you. Don't settle with a little bit of faith without a lot of hope. I wish somebody would walk in the house of God and say, I'm not settling until God does what he said that he's going to do. I'm not settling with a halfway prayer. I'm not settling with halfway worship. But I believe God is getting ready to bring me to a level that I have never been in my entire Somebody lift your hands across this building. I believe there's going to be an outbreak of faith because you have hope. I believe somebody is getting ready to put a trophy on the wall and let every devil know I got hope and faith is getting ready to break loose. I want to, that's it. Keep praising him. I want a musician to get in place. Get in place whenever you're ready, musicians. I'm going to hit, I'm going to close this, and I'm coming home to somebody. When Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, Lazarus didn't preach that I'm aware of. Some of you Bible scholars, did you ever hear of Lazarus preaching? Not that anybody knows of. I don't know that he wrote a book. I don't think he did. He certainly wasn't a prophet. And Sister McKee, I don't know where she went, but you can, she couldn't, he certainly could sorry, sister, he certainly couldn't sing. So why would God raise Lazarus? Of all the people, why did he raise him? Because he raised Lazarus from the dead because he wanted something to point at and say, hey, every time you get discouraged, I raise somebody that everybody else would have wrote off. I raise somebody that nobody thought they would ever get through the battle. I'm telling you, don't beat yourself up. Don't hold your head down. But you got to hope like you've never had hope. you just got to begin to lift up. They can play when they're ready. Who needs a miracle right now across this place? Come on, when Jesus came to the shore... And he saw the disciples fishing. He didn't ask them how long they've been fishing. He said, have you caught anything? Is that scripture? Have you caught anything? Hope is an expected end. It says when it's all over, I'm going to catch something. Let me tell you as I'm closing right now. I don't come and I'm, keep beating, I'm not trying to beat this drum, but I don't come from a Pentecostal pedigree. When I'm dead and gone, I don't want to leave my son with a preacher that just preached sermons and there was nothing special about me when it comes to the things of God but I want to leave him some hope and faith I'm going to leave an ark on a hill I want to leave memorials all around me I want to leave things behind that let him know that no matter how bad it gets that I got the hope that God's going to bring me through and when I got hope I can walk to an altar lift up my hands and have faith that God is in control of no matter what I face if you need something from God, I want you to come to this altar right now. Come on, that's it. Come in close as you can. I believe there's some people over here. Please don't sit back. You need something from God. I want you to make your way to this altar right now. God's getting ready to do a work. He's getting ready to do a miracle. By the faith of this pastor, 
This pastor had hope when he came to the city. And a lot of people thought, well, how in the world are you going to build a build church in Katy? He had hope. He had to have hope first before faith. Because faith can get weak sometimes. But he had a vision. He served the God that brought him off the evangelist field and said, you're going to build a church in a city like no other. And I believe God has sent you inside of this building to lift up your hands and say, my faith may be weak, but I got a hope in a God that created me and brought me into this world. And he's not going to abandon me now. Lift up your hands across this building. I want you to begin to say the name Jesus across this place right now. I want you to lift up your voice. That's it. And begin to say the name Jesus. I want angels to surround this altar right now. Whenever they're ready, they can begin to sing. But I want angels to sit. I want a wave of the Holy Ghost to begin to swing. Oh, that's it. That's it. There's hope beginning to build. There's hope. And when you got hope, faith comes out of you. I got faith to praise him. I got faith to speak in tongues. I got faith that God's in control. I got faith that God's taking care of my tomorrow. Oh, that's it. Let it go. Let it go. Preachers, help me pray. There's some miracles getting ready to happen. There's some deliverance getting ready. Oh, God's getting it. He's doing it. He's doing it. Come on, Mama. You've been wondering where God is. He's here. Come on, Daddy. He's here. Come on, visitor. He's here. Come on, young person. He's here. Come on, that's it. Keep going. That's it. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. There's something getting ready to happen over here. Come on, men. There's something getting ready to happen. Come on, ladies. There's something getting ready to happen. Some demons are happening to leave. Some strongholds are happening to leave. Come on, that's it. Come on. You're overcoming your flesh. You're overcoming strongholds. You're overcoming. That's it. There's a breakthrough happening right now. Somebody's coming out. Come on, that's it. Somebody's coming out.
God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord for what's happened tonight. Thank God. Amen. He just filled Owen with the baptism of the Holy Ghost the very first time. If you're here tonight and, and you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost for the first time tonight, please, 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 before you leave, before you leave, come and let me know. And uh, please don't leave without letting us know. We're so excited about what God is doing. Did you appreciate the ministry of Brother Charles O'Rourke? We're going to have him back really soon. And uh, amen. In case you're wondering, he is going to our campus. So technically, he's not leaving our church. He's just going to a different campus up in Louisville, in Dallas. And um, so <clears throat> very excited there. Uh, anticipating him coming. Can't wait till he gets here. And so uh, that's going to happen real soon. But thank God for his ministry. And uh, we serve a great God. We serve a great God. Look at somebody beside you and tell them, I'm glad I have the Holy Ghost. For some of you, thank God you have the Holy Ghost because you wouldn't be a safe person to sit next to if it wasn't for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. But God is so good. Amen. Thank the Lord. Thank you, choir. If you pray and continue to pray, amen. To everyone else, remember our services this week, Wednesday night, 7 p.m., and then again next Sunday morning, Sunday night. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed in the fear of the Lord. Amen. To all of our guests, make sure you stop by the POK Cafe before you leave, and uh, we're honored to have you here today. POK members, make sure you reach out to our guests first before you talk to everybody else. Amen. God bless you.